Canelo uh, defended this title belt the first time earlier this year in Cancun, Mexico against English veteran Ryan Rhodes. Rhodes ran him down before the fight and said, I'll take care of him. He doesn't have anywhere near my kind of experience and knowledge. After Canelo had pretty much tattooed Rhodes through the whole fight, Rhodes sang an entirely different tune afterward. Jim, Canelo is so popular in Mexico. That fight drew 35 million viewers in a country of over a, just over 100 million, which is comparable in the U.S. to Super Bowl numbers. Well, indeed, we have nearly 300 million people in the United States. The record audience for the Super Bowl was 106 million in 2010. That's about one third. More than one third of Mexicans watch Canelo against Rhodes. And he's only 21 years old. Suggesting that they like boxing better than we like football. <laughs> or maybe they just like redheads. The redhead has certainly made him a standout attraction in Mexico. In terms of boxing, Los Angeles is northern Mexico. <laughs> Every time I see it, I'm looking like it, they should have a, a green and white flag of the Irish or something. And I look at it, and it's very hard for me to visualize him as a Mexican. But that's what makes him unique. One thing about it, he is a doggone good fighter. That's for sure. You know, but there are a lot of skeptics who think he's an illusion, an uh, attractive young fighter. He has this. Uh, problem or this flaw I don't know we'll see when he fights the elitist of all the elite fighters look at the relaxed interaction with the crowd look at the big smile that's totally at odds with the monastic serious way that we see so many fighters come to the ring I mean that wasn't exactly Mike Tyson you know what I'm saying well, you know <laughs> to me he's like this gorgeous young actress if she becomes Meryl Streep Fabulous. If not, just look at him now. Canelo Alvarez is from Guadalajara. Alfonso Gomez's family is from Guadalajara. Gomez says, I'm going to upset him and take his title belt back to Guadalajara. Canelo says, nonsense. It came from Guadalajara. It goes back with me. Tale of the tape. Canelo Alvarez against Alfonso Gomez at 154 pounds. And you'll see the nine-year age difference in Alvarez's favor. One inch of height advantage to Gomez. Arm length advantage of a half inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for Alfonso Gomez. They both weighed in significantly under the 154-pound limit. Well, Alvarez only a half pound under, but Gomez a pound and a half under. And now look at the functional nine-pound weight difference in the ring as Canelo comes in at 168. Reminiscent of the rehydration of Victor Ortiz here. And Gomez is a little bit more like Floyd, Floyd Mayweather at 159. Let's go to ring announcer Joe Martinez for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from Staples Center here in the sports capital of the world, Los Angeles, California. Mayweather Promotions and Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Canelo Promotions present to you the main event of the evening. Una guerra entre dos tapatios. 12 rounds scheduled for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Carácter, DeWalt Power Tools, new 20-volt max lithium-ion system, AT&T, get it faster with 4G, rethink possible, Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, it's the right call, and Cancun Tourism, Cancun, discover paradise. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the Chairman, John Frierson, Executive Officer, George Dobb, Positions at ringside, Dr. Leandro Gatus and Dr. Blair Cranston. Your timekeepers in charge of the bell and counting for knockdowns, Willie Arriola and John Lechting. WBC supervisor in attendance, Mike George. Your three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system at ringside. From California, Max DeLuca. From California, Ray Corona. And from Mexico, Alejandro Rochin. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from California, Wayne Hedgeman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and
and the fighters are ready. Los peleadores están listos. Ciudad de Los Ángeles, Dilia Mundo. Make some noise if you are ready. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks, trim, and the flag of Mexico, green, white, and red. Official weight, 152 and one half pounds. As a professional, his record is outstanding. 23 victories, four defeats with two draws and 12 wins coming by way of knockout. De Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Erretador, the challenger, Alfonso. And right, next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing gold trunks with red and green trim, he weighed in 153 and one half pounds. As a young professional, he enters the ring perfect. 37 victories, no defeats, one draw, 27 wins by way of knockout. De Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, the reigning, defending, Defeated WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Good evening, gentlemen. This is for the WBC Championship. You're good here. You got your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself. Touch them up and come out the bell. In, in his rap song about this fight, Gomez wrote, that Alvarez will have the taste of defeat. You're gonna taste it. No doubt Alvarez has a different idea or a different taste. They have pretty similar styles. If there's a difference, it's the amount of focus on the body from Canelo Alvarez. He's a devoted body puncher. And unlike some fighters, Emmanuel, he will throw in combination to the body. He doesn't just throw a body shot at a time. Sometimes he'll put together three and four punch body shot combinations. That's work. I think he's a very good all-around boxer. I mean, I look at his boxing techniques, his jab, his, his ability to control the distance, placement of his punches. Sometimes I think he holds his hands a little too wide where you can catch it between the gloves. But other than that, he's a pretty much very good balance out fighter. And when you look at that body, I think they've made a very intelligent decision as a group to keep him now at 154 pounds. There used to be talk of trying to win a welterweight championship. This kid is not a welterweight. He's a junior welterweight headed someday toward being a middleweight. They're chanting Canelo, Canelo. Incidentally, the word means cinnamon. An obvious reference to that thatch of hair. Gomez looks like he has a real plan. We'll see whether it works. Well, I like the fact that Canelo fights often. That's always been one of the, I thought that it was very important to have a fighter, especially a young fighter. How did he get... Um, was it about 40 some fights already? I mean, he'd been fighting often. And evidently, wasn't big purses. And also, I, I like the fact that he boxes. I mean, you, even though he's a good puncher, he still uses a jab. He controls the distance. And he does a variety of things. He'll step back on a punch, he'll block it, and next time he'll roll underneath the punch. But one of the flaws some people see in him is that he really doesn't use the jab to set up much. He's trying to here. That's good. Emmanuel, the answer is 38 fights already. 37, 0, and 1 at age 21. Well, but with a very short amateur career. 
Well, he had his professional career, uh, amateur career, doing his professional career, which is very common of a lot of the Mexican fighters. Not at all unusual for Mexican fighters to turn professional in their mid-teens. Remember, Marco Antonio Barrera turned professional at 16. Julio Cesar Chavez. Plenty of them. <laughs> Plenty of them. Now Canelo starts to get the jab going. And down goes Alfonso Gomez on a left hook. Short. Quick, short left hook. Great punch. So much of the plans of mice and men. <laughs> he set it up with body shots, and then he brought the hammer. Use your jab. Use your jab. You step back, jab. Don't worry about it. In and out, in and out. Work that jab. Relax. Relax. Nothing happened. Nothing. Keep using your jab and relax. Just use your jab in and out, in and out. And you're right sharp and get bend your head out and in and out. Here you see a very accurate punch coming from Canelo. Just, just accuracy and balance. And his ability to predict where his opponent's head will be when he's throwing a punch. Exactly. Gomez walked right into that punch. This Gomez rounds. didn't do anything wrong. It almost looked more like a jab than a hook to It me. was more of a jab to me. But he has such great balance and such accuracy. What does it do to you when you get knocked down by a jab? <laughs> it's very disgusting. Miguel Cotto did <laughs> that. Embarrassing. To, Miguel Cotto did that to Joshua Clotty at the end of round one in Madison Square Garden, and it turned out to be the difference in a very close well, fight. Sugar Ray Leonard famously knocked down Benitez to win his championship with a jab. Don't see it very often. Round two, and I think, Larry, you were correct in saying that Gomez brought in a plan. But now he's down two points. And you heard his father in his corner saying, be patient, stick with it. Nothing happened. That sounded to me like, don't abandon the plan. The biggest weakness I see in Canelo, which is in quite a few fighters, he keeps his right hand too far to his right. And whenever he punches, well, any punch with his left hand, he draws his right hand to the side of his face, which means it's very easy to hit him through the center of a punch. That's what happened to Roy Jones the night that Antonio Tarver knocked him <laughs> under the ropes with a straight left hand shot. His right hand was by the side of yeah, his face. Yeah, well, actually, the punch that Tarver knocked, he started off with a looping left hand, and Roy put his hand to block it in some kind of way. Antonio lost his balance, and then the punch was sort of going around the top. It went through the center. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but again, Gomez seems to be winning the first half of the round. Good body shot by Gomez there. Two more good body shots for Gomez. He's been landing his jab in the early going. He has a more active jab than does Alvarez. There's one of those combinations I mentioned for Canelo Alvarez, often featuring more than one punch to the body. Again. No pushing, no pushing, no pushing. I see you know, Alvarez is going to the body, but if you look at the, the location of the cup on Gomez, it's going to be very difficult for Alvarez to hit him and do anything effective to his body. He's got one of those cups extremely high. Um, so if you do hit him with a good body punch, it's going to end up going right on the top of the cup. You think that was deliberate because uh, yes, Alvarez yes, because is such Alvarez a good is known punch. to be a good body puncher. Is it, is it legal? I guess it is. Well, I mean, nobody's complained about it. <laughs> but it's definitely a situation that should have been pointed out to the referee.
October 22, it's the premiere of the four-part series, 24-7 Pacquiao Marquez. Follow both men behind the scenes as they prepare for the third fight in their epic series. Following 24-7 that night, live boxing with the next Filipino sensation, Nonito Donaire, taking on Omar Narvaez. And don't forget the HBO pay-per-view matchup between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez, live on November 12th. Fake him straight shots. And if he comes in, just put, give your guard up. Don't be overconfident. Straight shots, straight shots, and short. Well, you hear the emphasis on straight shots there, and I'm not surprised, Emmanuel, toward the end of round two, I felt Canelo Alvarez's punches were wandering to the outside. They're all to the outside, and both fighters are very difficult to land punches on the outside the way they hold eight guards. Whoever would punch a side through the center, particularly up through the center, would be very effective in this fight. But so far, all of Alvarez's punches have been all to the outsides. Harold Letterman gave the second round to Alfonso Gomez. I which would have made also. it an even fight were it not for the knockdown at the end of round one. Yeah, it, it was almost a freak knockdown, a legitimate real one. But for that, Gomez would be up by two rounds, perhaps. Watching Canelo Alvarez's punches in round two wandering wide, thinking of the grinning and the smiling and the slapping hands with fans as he came into the ring, I wonder if he has a cold focus tonight. Now he starts to behave more aggressively. Alfonso Gomez was quick to point out in our discussion with him yesterday that Miguel, or excuse me, Saul Alvarez went down in the first round on a left hook from an undersized fighter who's like Jose Cotto, a natural 140-pounder who was fighting Alvarez at 147. And a lot of people are going to point to that as a question mark as they get ready to fight Alvarez because they'll try to build confidence off the fact that an undersized Jose Cotto, not Miguel Cotto, knocked Alvarez down. Like getting knocked down in prize fighting if you fought 35 40 times is unusual in prize fights in other words if you hadn't been knocked down by that time yeah i mean oscar de la Hoya was knocked down twice in his first seven or eight fights and canelo i take i take to be a relatively high contact fighter this is a guy whose fights are going to be rough yeah, so right now he's got a lot of good defensive skills, but I'm surprised that Gomez is at the stage. I'll be honest, he's fighting a much better fight than I expected. And the fact, as you said, Larry, you gave the last round to him and take the knockdown away from the first round, he might be up two rounds. Well, Harold Letterman gave him the last round as well. And I think right now, Alvarez is a little bit bewildered by the timing and the activity of Alfonso Gomez. And he, he hasn't found a way to effectively get to Gomez. Good right hand by Gomez. One thing is volume of punches is too low, meaning uh, uh, Alvarez. Well, clearly he has done his homework. Meaning Gomez. Yes. Yes, he has. As well as his gym work. Alvarez curiously inactive much of round three and Alfonso Gomez putting on a show in the last 30 seconds of that round. So it's an uncertain start for Canelo Alvarez in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, here in Las Vegas, we are calling the fight in Staples Center live from our perch here at the MGM Grand. Joe Cortez, referee for the main event, just gave instructions in Floyd Mayweather's dressing room. But be careful because when you're fighting a top one, you well know head's going to be closer. Yeah. Be careful with the headbutt, all right? Okay. If they're acting as the headbutt, we go to the scorecard. After four completed rounds, the fight has to be stopped. Okay. Okay? Don't hit your opponent while he's down, because if you hit him while he's down, it's going to cause you points, or you may be disqualified if he can't continue. Okay. Please don't hit your opponent while he's down. Okay. There's no saving by the bell in any round, including the last round. Chief Second, you have any questions? No. Boy, you have no, any questions? Okay. Okay, it's a good clean fight. I want to keep his elbows nice. <laughs> okay. okay. And I'm, oh, I'm, I'm just going by what the other side protesting about. I want to make sure we have a good clean fight. Okay, no I'm problem. I'm fair, but I'm firm. You know that. Okay? Okay. Okay, okay my nice. Right, Round four begins in Staples Center. 
And you saw the byplay between Cortez and Mayweather. Uh, based on the responses of Floyd Mayweather when he was around Joe Cortez, we surmise that he likes Cortez as a referee and is surely pleased with his assignment. Harold, how do you have it so far? I've got a two rounds to one. Alfonso Gomez, but in the all all important points category, 28 to 28, so it's all even. Uh, well, I thought Canelo Alvarez did enough to win round one. Uh, Gomez wasn't all that busy. He might have won it if he didn't get knocked down, but he did get knocked down, so Canelo gets a 10-8 round. Rounds two and three, uh, Canelo Alvarez just wasn't Canelo Alvarez. He couldn't get off. Gomez took it to him. Clearly won rounds two and three by staying low. Now, look how low he stays and landing really well to the body. Larry, to answer your question about the cup, the inspector in the dressing room is supposed to make sure that the fight is cup, the top of the cup is even with the belly button. Anyway, two rounds to one Gomez, but even in points. Inspector didn't do his job. Correct. Alvarez is mixing in uppercuts in this round. Looks as though he's decided that he can get up the middle by coming up and under against Gomez. And I think that's what he's going to have to do. Gomez has his legs so far apart that it's going to be very hard for him to sustain a good combination of punches. But on the other side, Alvarez is waiting. He's rolling his shoulders, doing all of the things, but not punching enough. He needs to return punches, particularly through the summer. Up, upwards. Gomez, the more active fighter. Gomez throwing more punches. Gomez, Gomez landing Man. at a reasonable enough rate. Alvarez clearly believes he's the stronger fighter as he stands against the ropes and invites Gomez in. And Gomez seems to think, I can handle the power. I can take some chances. Well, a primary feature of a normal Canelo plan would be to get in enough body shots to wear Alfonso Gomez down. But at this rate of throwing punches, it's less likely he can get that done. But Gomez is still not a puncher, so I mean, I think he feels very comfortable in there. Even though Gomez may win a round or two, I don't think that Alvarez feels that he's in any danger at all in this fight. I'm sure he's not worried at all about Gomez's punching power. The question is, why isn't Alvarez throwing more? Uh. Now he begins to let his hands go a little bit. He doesn't think there's he's a good a, uppercut. He's at least in some danger. And he doesn't know what's going on. And he has a sense of urgency right now that shows that. He's throwing with abandon when he lets that uppercut go, particularly. But some of these are wide shots, winging punches, and Gomez is still more effectively coming up the middle. Yeah, and he has not found a way to put together combinations on Gomez. And another look at the strip here in Las Vegas. We were here one round to go for Cortez's instructions to Floyd Mayweather. Now let's hear what he said to Victor Ortiz. And I'll do my job and I expect for you to do yours. Yes, sir. All right, my man? Yes, sir. I Take got care. a question, Joe. Yes, sir. I got a question. I, I know that uh, you're a tremendous referee with okay. a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, we all know, the whole world know that, uh, that uh, Floyd Mayweather uses his, his elbow a lot. I just... Want to know if, if we can do anything? You know, I, I, I will watch that. If I please. see that, if I see him coming in with the elbow, that's a foul. Okay. If he's blocking, it's not a foul. But if he comes in with the elbow, sometimes I saw a lot of tapes, and sometimes he goes like this and keep it like this. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Keeps well, well, the elbow I, I already told him a little bit please. about that already. Yes, I will yes, watch please. out for that. So when but it sounded to me as though Cortez had already told Danny Garcia that holding the elbow up in a defensive position is okay. Let's go back to Los Angeles. Round five between Canelo Alvarez and Alfonso Gomez. The crowd virtually all for Alvarez or so it seems, but he hasn't gotten off to the start in the fight they might have hoped for. And you can see that despite the fact that Canelo Alvarez ended the first round by knocking Gomez down, Harold Letterman sees Gomez have it, having won the three ensuing rounds and taking the lead in the fight. And I'm, I'm not sure since we've begun following Canelo Alvarez that we've ever seen him lose three rounds in a row on any scorecard. Well, uh, he's not busy for one thing. And when he does punch, he's only throwing one, one punch at a time. And even when he shoots the uppercut, he very seldom does he, he, the three or four punches. He's just throwing one power shot looking for a knockout. And he's totally abandoned his jab. Meanwhile, Gomez has put together the best and most comprehensive plan I've ever seen from him. And for the moment, He's doing to Alvarez some of what he did to Arturo Gatti at the end of Gatti's career. He's landed some clean right hands.
out trying to lift Canelo back into the forefront of the fight. Gomez still putting together a pretty interesting variety of punches. Both fighters are from Guadalajara originally. But Gomez came to the U.S. And when he was a child. He's now a citizen. And he fights more like an American fighter in a way. Yes, but he's really much of Which like he is. Crazy, he is. <laughs> now a little more activity from Alvarez and a pretty good right hand at the end of that combination. Alvarez has been very sporadic with his jab, Emmanuel. That's what I was just getting ready to say, Jim. That was the first time I saw a jab in about three rounds. If he would jab more, it would set up things better. But he's just waiting on rolling punches and waiting on one big knockout punch. In the meantime, he's having a tough fight with Gomez. Gomez may be winning this fight. Now Alvarez begins to put combinations together again. That was a solid shot. He's getting the crowd back into the fight. And Gomez's punches lose their snap as he's on his back foot for the moment. Alvarez pushing, pushing forward. Reminiscent of round one as Canelo simply stood still and Gomez walked into a left hand to end the round. That could be a hard round to score because Alvarez landed more hard punches. How are you feeling? Good, very good. A little ice now. Some water? No. A little bit more vaseline. Be careful with those counter punches because you're going a little bit crazy and he can catch you. And keep your hands up and bring your hands back up and get more speed now. You got to throw more punches. When you use your jab, you're catching him. Throw the jab, throw the jab, throw the jab. Jab, back, jab, jab, jab. Jab and push him. Push him in with the gloves up. Halfway through the last round, it seemed to me that Alfonso Gomez was rolling toward winning a fourth consecutive round against Canelo Alvarez. But then Alvarez, in the second half of that last round, seemed to begin riding the ship with more authoritative punching, and he won the round on Harold Letterman's card to even up the fight. Watching live action in Staples Center in Los Angeles as Canelo Alvarez takes on Alfonso Gomez. Alvarez in the gold trunks, Gomez in the white. This is the last preliminary bout before our main event of this pay-per-view telecast between Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz here in Las Vegas, the place from which we're calling the fight on a television monitor. Gomez has got his jab working again. And that half-inch arm length advantage showing up a little bit as he lands his jab. Alvarez falls short with his twice in a row. Another short jab for Alvarez, but now he connects. Gomez fighting a gutsy, smart fight. Yes, he is. And I'm very surprised the fact that he is really, for the most part, setting the tempo of the fight. Even Alvarez though he doesn't, have, right yeah, he doesn't have the coordination out of speed, out of power of Alvarez, but he's still setting the pace of the fight and the busy of the two fighters. Good 
solid right hand by Canelo up and under, and then a big right cross across the top. Gomez is badly hurt. Canelo's got a chance to finish, and the referee's going to stop it right away. Too quick. Too quick. Gomez was not out of there yet. Canelo may have been headed toward the stoppage, but that was too quick. Agreed. Canelo is the hometown guy, even if he's not from that hometown. Sometimes, guys, I think that in boxing, the hometown edge is a pillar of the game. Promoters want it, fans want it, we get it. Emmanuel Gomez was <laughs> stunned, but not that badly hurt yet. I thought it was definitely a quick stoppage myself. I mean, I could go on and on, but I think you said it already, Larry. It was, it was a quick stoppage, but it's like this is what the crowd wanted, but I, I don't think so. All right, watch the uppercut land here. That starts the damage. Then the right cross. Boom. Gomez is hurt, and you can see it. And now Canelo has a chance, but he hasn't quite finished him yet, in our view, at the moment when the referee steps in here. Look, he was hurt, but he, he deserves, given what's happened in this fight, a chance to show whether he had a few seconds left in him. That's all we're really saying. He was flat out even on Harold Letterman's scorecard coming to this round. He won three rounds in a row on the Letterman scorecard, second, third, and fourth. But the referee felt as though he wasn't going to be able to weather this particular storm. Alvarez did land some shots. But he didn't land nothing too much clean that devastating you know, after that Gomez first two was or three recovering. Punches. Yeah, he was recovering. No, I, I but, thought you know, they were clean punches to the body and the head on the ropes. And Gomez was hurt. And Canelo earned this. If it went on, you have to believe he would have. I believe it would have, but I, I thought it was a quick stoppage still. Yeah. And the well, blue. I don't question that he was going to win the fight. And, and I think the superiority was demonstrated there in that exchange. But at the end of the day, in my view, he hadn't finished him yet. And you see what caused all of the trouble was the right uppercut. The uppercut changed yeah, the fight. Yes, the punch, anything up between the center would have been effective. When he started, Actually, I guess either one of them. Well, he adjusted, and that's what makes him an amazing young fighter. And he really has a sense of what's going on. He can adjust. He can become defensive. But th there's a part of him that we just saw that is what makes him who he is. Let's go to Joe Martinez, the ring announcer in L.A., for the particulars on the knockout. So, ladies and gentlemen, from the city of angels, Los Angeles, California, two minutes, 36 seconds, round number six. Referee Wayne Hedgebeth calls a halt to the bout for your winner by K.O. victory.